My name is Nancy Rucker, and I'm representing the arts side of the cultural connections to students as chair of the Arts Education Task Force of the Sarasota County Arts Council. We are so pleased and privileged to be a partner in this exciting initiative. I want to bring you greetings from Miriam Springle, who is executive director of the Science and Environmental Council, and she's representing the science and history organizations. Miriam is attending the Florida Association of Museum Con uh, Conference today, but you'll see her next time. Do you know how many people have asked me, what is this about? Yeah, I, you can laugh. When is something going to happen? What do you think they mean by that? Well, it is happening now, and we are all part of it. The Patterson Foundation has given us a truly incredible opportunity to be part of a process. That's P-R-O-C-E-S-S, -S, and I do want to emphasize that. Putting all of us in the same room. Arts people, science people, history people, youth organizations, teachers, curriculum experts, to learn from each other, to start to paint the big picture that will make students in Sarasota County truly unique because they will have experiences that will not only add to their learning, but also enrich their lives. So, Angela. Thank you, Nancy. As most of you know, state standards in a number of areas has, have recently been updated and we're beginning the process of new implementation. One of our major goals for today is to give you an opportunity to hear about the state standards in many areas. You will also have the opportunity to experience them through the unique lens of the district instructional focus calendar. Sarasota County School District curriculum specialists from subject areas, from many subject areas, will be sharing their knowledge with you today and I'd like to introduce our program specialist in reading language arts, grades six through 12, Sue Meckler. Good morning. I'd like to um, have you look in your folders this morning. On the left-hand side, you'll see a gray handout called Instructional Focus Calendar Development and Implementation. And as Dr. Detman said earlier, we are going to share with you the process we went through in developing the calendar, as well as our first year implementation process. If you notice, one of the first things you see is a diagram of a tree of knowledge. And at the base of that tree, you see a book. As you all know, literacy is the foundation to all learning. When we think about the trunk of that tree and the growth of our students, we have many branches which are all our schools that are represented in that tree. But I am very happy to say that we are adding tons of branches today by including all of your organizations as part of this process. When we think of the leaves, we think of all of our students and the impact that all of your organizations can have on their continued growth. If we go to the next slide, we'll see that we want to talk about what our purpose is for learning this morning. In our content area, we want to again provide you with an overview of the Instructional Focus Calendar development and an overview of our state standards. They can be very cumbersome and they can be very clumsy. So we want to keep this as simple as possible and yet think about ways that you can make connections to help support our students. We're also going to again talk about this process of development and our implementation. When we think of learning, one of the things that we know is that language is essential to the learning process. Students need to be able to speak, write, listen, talk about their learning. In education, we live in the world of acronyms, and there are so many acronyms. I did a new teacher training a few weeks ago, and I actually created a little cheat sheet for them that had about 40 acronyms listed. Today, we're going to keep it very simple and teach you about four acronyms. Also, we want to think about this concept of developing a common language. It is essential that as we work together as a partnership 
that we think the, about the language we are using and that we are on the same page when we talk about curriculum, standards, and continuous improvement for students. As an outcome today, we are hoping that you understand the demands of our curriculum K-12. And those demands include our four major content areas, science, social studies, language arts, and mathematics, as well as some opportunities to look at the arts and our career and technology programs. We also then are hoping that you think about the connections that we can continue to make and grow together in this idea of enhancing these cultural experiences. On the next slide, I want to introduce you to what is called the FSIM. This is one of our first acronyms, okay? FSIM stands for Florida's Continuous Improvement Model. The key word there being continuous improvement. In education, that's what we strive for. We are looking for students to continually improve in their learning. Sometimes this is referred to as the SIM model, to keep it simple. So if you hear people talking about the SIM model, it refers to continuous improvement. This is a model that was developed uh, many years ago, and Florida adopted it as the model that is recommended for all school districts to adopt. It makes good sense. This model has four pieces to it, which you can see from the diagram, and it is a cyclical process, starting with what we call planning, doing, checking, and then acting. And it continues on and on. Plan, do, check, act. Plan, do, check, act. Plan, do, check, act. When we talk to our teachers about planning good quality core instruction, we want to make sure that they are continually looking at those four components. Within the planning phase, you will see that the two terms there are data disaggregation and calendar development. This is where the concept of, here's a new acronym, IFC, known as Instructional Focus Calendar, came to be. Our superintendent last year charged the curriculum department with developing the Instructional Focus Calendars, known as IFCs, for each of the four major content areas. It was a year-long process, and we involved teachers' suggestions in creating these as well as looking at your final acronym, NGSSS, known as Next Generation Sunshine State Standards. Say that with me. Next Generation Sunshine State Standards. Say it three times fast. No, I'm kidding. Um, I often do get tongue-tied, though, saying Sunshine State Standards. The Next Generation In the do part, you will see that, I'm pretty loud, that's all right, okay. In the do section of the SIM model, you'll see that this is where the actual teaching takes place. This is the direct instruction after the teachers have done their planning, and then checking is essential for learning. Our teachers must check for understanding along the way. I heard the word formative assessment used. It is critical to learning. And then, once we've checked for understanding, the ACT component is what do we do next? For those students who mastered it, we need to enrich their learning opportunities. For those who did not master it, we need to reteach, reassess in a different way. And then the cycle continues. Plan, do, check, act. If you move on to the next slide, in developing the calendars, the program specialist had several considerations. The first one was looking at that SIM model. Then we looked at data. What does our district data show are areas of strengths for our students and areas of need? There's also something that the state provides us called test specifications. And these are essential documents for teachers because it provides teachers with exact 
samples of what each of the benchmarks looks like. It is critical to the process for teachers to understand what it is our students will be assessed on and what level of complexity. We also looked at the benchmarks themselves and then, as some of you may know, we are moving toward end of course exams with algebra being our first end of course exam at the state level, which will be given this year, 2011. On the next slide, you'll see a diagram. And this can tend to be a little complicated, but I want to keep it simple for you. If you think of this, again, as a cycle, and you'll see what we call on and off ramps, where all of our students begin in the area we call the green area. This is the good to go area. This is our core instruction for all students. And they are on that path of learning based on our standards and our instructional focus calendar. As we go through Plan, Do, Check, Act, and we check for understanding and find some of the students possibly struggled with a particular concept or skill, they move into the yellow area, which we talk about as additional support. It's not saying that they don't stay in green, because they do. They need to continue learning along with everyone else, but we need to support their learning by providing additional instruction. And that oftentimes is in a small group situation. Then we may actually even have students go into the red area for one-on-one -on -one instruction. So it's on ramps and off ramps, and students continue to move, but they always stay in that green area. When we developed our instructional focus calendars, the green area, again, is our core instruction. That is the NGSSS, our Sunshine State Standards. In looking at the status, again, Dr. Detman alluded to this earlier, we currently have calendars developed in the areas of language arts, math, science, and social studies. And we're going to show you where those are located within our school's website. We also are looking at the arts and career and technical education whose standards are in the process of being developed. And also you know that in areas of science and social studies, they are not complete at this point as we look at when they're going to be assessed. Lastly, I want to take you to our district website so that you can see where you can actually access these calendars. On our district's homepage, you will see on the left-hand side, there's a directory A to Z or departments. So Ray just went into our district directory and he's gonna scroll down to curriculum and instruction. On the left-hand side, then, you will see about seven lines down, instructional focus calendars. And when you click there, you will see the four main content areas. If Ray clicks on language arts, you will see there's a drop-down menu that lists each calendar by grade level. So you and our community our parents, our teachers can access this information to see what the path is.